Hello everyone and welcome back to UE5 BP Guru. Today we're going to be talking about functions uh, and events within your code. Now most of you starting out whenever you open up a blueprint you should have already seen this event begin play. Um, how do we utilize it? Well basically every time we start our game depending on what blueprints you have in the world if they're hooked up to an event begin play they will always begin as soon as the level loads or your game loads. So for example, if you had uh, a game where you had thirst and hunger, you might kickstart that off with your event begin play. So for example, you might say, okay, you might have a function or a custom event that starts when the game loads up to start taking hunger and thirst away. So you would pull off from your event begin play, call that function, and have it start taking that away. That would need to happen on your event begin play. Um, it's not always something you want to use, uh, as I say. It, it, as as I say, because it starts when that game loads up. You don't necessarily want something to happen when it loads up. Uh, but this will only ever run once. So it will run on the event begin play, but won't run again. It will only ever run once. Um, if you want something to run continuously, you might use uh, an event tick. Now, oh gosh, if I could spell. There we go. So this is what an event tick looks like. Now this runs every second. It's called every frame, uh, every frame of the game. So if you're running 60 frames a second, this is running 60 times uh, per second. It's running every tick, every frame. So these this runs a lot uh they are kind of expensive to use um so i would only ever advise using these um when you really really need it um you might use it for example with a real world clock so for example you might have seen where my tutorial has the day and night cycle with a clock we utilize the event tick because we want to change the second all the time but if you have too many of those and too many blueprints in the scene it, you'll start seeing performance issues. So really only ever use these uh, as and when you need them. But that is um, a very similar thing to the event begin play. It's just that it runs every frame, every single frame in a second, it will run that code. Um, so yeah, one thing to be aware of. But um, we also have um, abilities to use a custom event. So this is a custom event. Um, for example, you might want, um, to clean your code up a bit. So, for example, when you create the event begin play, you might start that health and hunger drain. Well, you'd want to use a custom event to call that. So, for example, you might say, okay, uh, we'll do, uh, rem I don't know, thinking of an example here, let's say, okay, let's get our integer. We might say, okay, let's say this is like health. We might want to minus our health um from our integer so again if we set that so you might say okay on event begin play i want to uh let's slow this down i should have set this up before so let's say we have an integer it has 100 health in it so we default the value to 100 so when we start a game we have 100 we then want to do a branch check where we say, okay, is our integer, less or equal to zero. And then if that's false, what we can do is rerun the test event. Now this will happen very quickly. You'd want to delay in here. This is just an example. I'm not, don't copy this code. This, I'm not teaching you how to do anything here. I'm just showing you an example. So, and then what we'd want to do is to start that code off when we, the event begins play, the event begins, we call that function test event. And so what will happen is the game begins. We run this test event code, which starts this off. We then go, okay, is our health, uh, we get our health, we minus one off. Or we minus our thirst, you're saving. You don't want to minus your health. 
thirst or hunger, we minus one from it. And then we say, okay, is it equal to zero? No. Then we would test the event again. Uh, if it is, then we might die or, you know, you would do something else. But then it would rerun this code and it will continuously loop through this code until we get to the zero. So that's kind of a good example of how to use custom events and event begin plays. Again, you could run, you could just do this. Um, you wouldn't need, you wouldn't need this, but you could just say, okay, we'll hook this up to the event begin tick. This will run every frame per second, but we would put a delay to say, okay, I want you to only do this every second. I want you to minus one from our hunger and we wouldn't need this or the, um, we would need the branch check though to see if we hit zero so we could die for example. So it'd wait a second. So although it's trying to fire this every, every time it will still wait for a second to pass before it actually runs this. Um, that's just an example of custom events and event ticks and frames, uh, event begin plays. Now, if we were to do it like this, your code would get very, very messy. So what's normally best practice is to create a function. To do that, you have it on the left-hand side here where it says function. You just click on this and we can create another one, test function two. Um, and we can basically pass information in and out of this function, um, depending on what we need. But we could then basically say, okay, let's do something easy. Let's do a branch check. So let's say we have something that happens um, outside of this function, like the the condition changes on the outside. You could do that and we could say, okay, maybe we also want to pass in our health integer. So we could say, or thirst integer or something. Let's just call it health for now. And we say, okay, let's create this into, uh, oh gosh, I need to expand it out. We turn that into an integer so we can pass our health through. And let's say, okay, if it's true, we're gonna minus uh 10 health you see you see what i'm saying right and then what we could do then is say okay let's get a return node now return nodes allow us to pass that information back out of the function back into our event graph and i'm not going to do any other code but i'm just going to throw that in there and you can see it there happening so we're bringing this health in if it's true we'll bring that health in and we'll minus off 10 and pass it back through. And then if we go back to our event graph, you can see uh, if we drag out the test function two, it now has our variable here that we can plug in and we can utilize it so we can say, okay, it's always gonna be true on event begin play, it's always gonna be true. Let's minus off um, 10 from our health. But you would just plug that integer in to be honest, there you go, like so easier way of doing it. You plug in your health value, that gets put in, minus is 10 off inside the function, like so, and then it comes back out the other end. You can do lots of cool, fun things like this. Uh, there are other cool ways you can do these things, like um, you don't always, if you've already put the code into your event graph, for example, you could just be like, okay, um, let's select all of this, right click, and you can collapse it to a function. And, Oh, is it gonna do it? Why is it not collapsed to function? Maybe the branch? Hmm. Collapse. Oh, it just doesn't like that, does it? Uh, let's try it without those. Let's just do those three. Collapse to function. No. Okay, well, let's collapse to function for some reason. Well, <laughs> you can normally do it, I swear. Weird. Um, maybe because we're pulling off of that. It's not actually letting me do anything. Oh, I think it's, um, I can't delete or anything. Okay. Let's close that down. Okay. Let's try again. This is a, this is a, um, there we go. It's a bit of a bug with UE 5.1. I've noticed you sometimes can't amend any code or delete things out and you have to close it and open it back up, but there's our new function and all of that code is now within it. So, and what will happen is this will come back down to here and it will still run back from here. 
So just another example of something you can do with functions if you want to. Um, yeah, so hopefully this has been helpful uh, in sort of a little brief introduction to kind of the event begin play, the event tick and the custom events and also functions as a whole. Um, again, these functions just help to tidy your code up and sort of break it into more manageable chunks. So when you're coding and you need to change something, you can go back and of course, find where your issue may or may not be without looking through lots of spaghetti code. Um, so yeah, hopefully that will help you to sort of keep your projects tidy and more manageable. But thank you so much guys for watching. Hopefully you found this useful. If you did, leave a little like, leave a little comment with anything else you would like covered. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. It's free to do. And you can always change your mind down the line. And I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye.